So Interact Centaur has a mobile platform that is rough terrain compatible. It has four wheels and four wheel steering. So Interact can go forward, backward, and you will be able to command it in increments of 10 centimeters, 50 centimeters, and one meter, and it can do spot turns, and you will be able to command increments of 10 degrees, 45 degrees, and 90 degree segments. So the Intact Center has multiple camera systems which you can select from. It has the driving camera on top of the vehicle which is located on a pan-tilt unit, actually a robot arm, that allows you to pan and tilt the camera before you drive. You have a front Hascam between the wheels and a back Hascam behind the vehicle which allows you to see the shaded areas uh, that you can't see through the main driving camera. On the robotic arm you have a tool camera which actually brings a close-up view of the tool and the pack and the task board. Once you're near to the task board for the insertion, you're free to select that one. The robotic arms of the platform are two KUKA lightweight robots that are controlled in impedance control mode, which means they can be compliant to the environment and uh, relay contact forces in very high fidelity to your force feedback joystick. The robot arms comply to external forces. They are equipped with uh, Cartesian force torque sensors uh, with a gripper and they are holding the pack. And we instrumented the pack with a laser that actually allows you to give uh, information on spatial depths uh, in a monoscopic uh, stereo view. So when you're closing in on the task board, by looking at the laser spot on the surface, you'll be able to confirm whether the pack is well aligned to the hole or not. The first screen gives you an overview uh, of the task. In the second screen you get the sequence summary for the task, which consists of first locating a task board. For this you will use the camera head of the rover and pan and tilt the camera to identify the task board in the room. Afterwards you will use the motion platform of the Interact Centaur to drive to the task board in a favorable position. You will be supported by virtual reality overlay and predictive information that compensates for the time delay between space and ground. After you have reached location of the task board, you will use the robot arm to manipulate a pack into a hole on a task board. So once you're ready, you go next and this brings up the first screen of the actual experiment. You see here a live video feed from ground, which you can identify that it's functioning by a green dot that moves on the upper left corner of the video feed. In the video feed, you can change the camera uh, by choosing any of the four camera selectors here that correspond to camera locations on the rover. So if I want to change, for instance, to the tool camera, which is located here on the right arm of the robot, I press tool and the camera view changes to the tool camera, which is now pointing down. For this recorded video, the experiment also makes use of 850 milliseconds of time delay between this system and the robotic system, which is located in a different room here at Aztec. So I'm going to go back to the head camera. We also have a front Hascam and a back Hascam, which you can use for driving. And you see here two widgets. There is the navigation widget, which is permanently shown, which shows the orientation of the rover in its world and the orientation of the camera of the camera head in its world. With the target finder widget, you can control the pan and tilt of the camera to look around the room to identify the task board. You see a prediction of your command here in the, in the pan widget of the camera and I'm needing to look around to find the task board. The task board is a small mechanical tool which consists of pegs and knobs and allows to do tasks on. You can scale your set point by pressing this enter button here, 5 degrees, 10 degrees, 30 degrees or 1 degree. And I'll put it on 30 degrees to make faster motions by certain increments.
down here in the navigation widget you see the camera icon predicting the future location of the camera. So there was a very big delay on the camera now and I overshot basically to pass by the taskboard which is located here. So I'm trying to find a line the camera now to the center of the taskboard. Once it is aligned, you can press the place target button, which places the location of the target in the rover coordinates frame. So you can keep spatial orientation uh, while the camera zooms back to the driving mode. When the rover drives, the camera always looks forward. Now we are in the rover drive control panel and what you see here is the current position of your rover indicated by, the, by a virtual square projected in front of the wheels and in light yellow you can see the prediction of the rover command that you can issue by the rover command uh, buttons here on the left screen size. You still have the navigation widget here and now the, this widget indicates the distance of the rover to the taskboard. So the task now is to actually drive to the taskboard by using this widget here and again you can change the step size arbitrarily between 0.1 meter up to half a meter and 1 meter or 10 degrees, 45 degrees and 90 degrees. So since the target is located to the left we do a 90 degree turn to the left. You see on the top end of the screen the feet of the taskboard and green overlays here which indicate the position that you need to drive to. So it is the scope for driving to align those yellow marks with the green ones, which means you have to advance and turn to the left. The platform only does straight line motions and spot turns. So a good strategy is to drive at a 90 degree angle to these green markers to the point where the distance doesn't minimize any further, then do a 90 degree turn and approach the green. And it will require some fine tuning. You see the minimize, the distance minimizes, and if I keep incrementing the distance, it still minimizes, so that could be a pretty good location. Turning back left, and you'll see that you still have to increment your direction on the right hand side. drive another meter. And a little bit less. And we turn left again. Should be fairly well aligned now. So let's try and approach this. Now you can see that the next button is enabled, which means you're sufficiently aligned with the green target spots. By pressing next, you go in the arm control mode, which allows you to insert the pack which is pre-inserted to the robotic arm. The tolerance from the pack to the hole is only 150 micrometers. And it is the scope to insert the pack into the top right-hand corner of those brass holes that you can see here. So the GUI first asks you to align the arm which initiates an automatic sequence to pre-align the arm over the selected hole. Okay, I press align to pre-align the arm. And while the robot arm is aligning, the other widgets are blanked out until the motion of the robotic arm is finished. 
So now the alignment didn't perfectly work, so you're free to press align again, and it will make another fine alignment of the robotic arm in front of the target hole. You can see on the ground a laser dot that is projected out of the tool, uh, how it disappears in the hole, indicating a fairly well alignment. You can change to the tool cam to verify that the pack is aligned correctly with the upper right hand hole. And the task now consists of inserting the pack with a joystick to a depth of minus 40 millimeters. This widget indicates the depth of the insertion of the pack from the, from the target or the distance of the pack from the task board. Once you press the motor on the, 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 the yellow button on the joystick, the motor indicator will turn green, which means you are in control in real time of the robotic system. And any significant force that is rendered on the pack will be reflected to your arm. Moving forward will lower the pack. And you can see the distance being minimized. The joystick will center you with a small force to the, to the middle position because you are giving a rate control input. So if you're moving off the center position, you will feel a small spring pushing you back to the center, which allows you to actually stop the motion again if you like. So let's try and do the insertion here. And you can use the tool cam to verify the alignment. While this widget is shown, you can still use it for fine manipulation of the arm. You can change the step size of linear motions here and of rotational motions here. Be careful with rotational motions. I will set the step size to 5 mm and move the pack slightly to the left. If the widget here is not enabled, it means you're too close to the zero position from the task board. To demonstrate this, I will move the pack forward and you will see the widget on the left hand side being disabled, which is to prevent that you can execute motions while the pack is inserted partially into the task board. If this is the case, retract the pin by moving backwards, which should make the widget again useful. and allows you to fine-tune the pointing of the pack to the hole. If you're not seeing any laser reflection, it means you're well aligned and you can perform the insertion task. and you can change to the head camera to get a better situational overview. If you're not sufficiently well aligned, you will feel a force feedback on the joystick, which means you have to retract and fine-tune for another insertion attempt. Right now, I inserted it to minus 40 millimeters, which is the goal of the experiment. And from this moment on, the finish button is enabled, which will finish the experiment. Which concludes the run on protocol 2 of Interact. You see that the trial number has incremented here, which means that the, the experiment was successful. And now you can go ahead and copy the data by pressing copy data button and exchanging the USB connector with the data link to a USB drive and press save.